Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo. They said a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. I think he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? You want me to play something? Well, I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No, it's okay. How about a traditional ballad? It should be right up your street. Sisters came walking by the sea. Oh, the wind and the rain. The eldest one pushed the other one in. Oh, the dreadful wind and the rain. See, they both had a love for the captain's son. But he only cared for the youngest one, all the dreadful wind. Oh, the eldest envied her sister fair, oh, the wind and the rain, with a pretty little face and a long blonde hair, all the dreadful wind. Yeah. 
It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind, but she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> Is that too much? Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. Now I know these in colour. Did I pass? Sorry I messed it up with all that Rapunzel stuff. Do you need me to do that card again? We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book, was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair was cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. And the glaziers. I worked there some weekends and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then he had a sense of craftsmanship. It wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. <laughs> Simon never cheated on me. He was devoted to me. And I was devoted to him. Nothing in life is easy. We were good to each other. Life isn't a fairy tale. You do what you can.
Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? It's a real life fairy tale. There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. When she went home, Sam had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Sam about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She sent him out of the house, kicked him out, <laughs> called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. 